In this video, we're going to talk about international non-governmental organizations and transnational advocacy networks. Sorry for the acronyms and the complicated words, but uh, this is the way we talk about these things. Uh, and to begin with, uh, when we talk about international non-governmental organizations and transnational advocacy networks, in contrast to international organizations, these are organizations that, that cross national boundaries that do not have uh, states as members or, or, or do not have states as the primary members, right? That, that's what we really mean by non-governmental organizations. Let's talk a little bit more about what these mean and how we distinguish them. So what's the difference between uh, an, an international non-governmental organization and a transnational advocacy network? Well, so there's a couple differences just in the terminology, international versus transnational. To be honest with you, um, transnational is, is sort of a more contemporary word. International is seen as being an older word. Uh, transnational really conveys this idea that it's not between governments, right? It's across societies. But essentially, it means the same thing. Uh, NGOs versus advocacy networks. Well, uh, advocacy networks obviously um, refers very specifically to conducting ag advocacy. That is to say, in one way or another, we would say lobbying governments, right? Trying to get governments to do certain things or, or trying to promote certain activities. Not all non-governmental organizations are engaged in, in advocacy. Um, and many networks, uh, many trans transnational advocacy networks might consist of multiple uh, non-governmental organizations. So there's a difference in nuance between these things, but, but the last bullet point is what I'd focus on. For most of our purposes, the terms are interchangeable, and so we're not going to lose too much sleep over the difference between terms. I would also say um, that oftentimes um, we use, uh, rather than saying international non-governmental organization, we just say NGO, and, and in many cases the international part um, is implied. Uh, but I do want to you know, stress, at least in principle, that while some uh, NGOs really only focus themselves within a, within a particular country, there are those that work across many countries, and, and those are the ones we're really interested in, in a course on world politics. Um, so starting with transnational advocacy networks, what do they do? Well, in many cases, they're trying to promote something, and they're trying to promote it across multiple countries at the same time. Right? standards, norms, or policies that they desire. And the reason they're working across multiple countries at the same time, it might be that the thing they're interested in really only works if multiple countries do it, such as an environmental standard. Right? It doesn't really do much good for only one country to adopt a particular standard on global warming. You need all countries to do it for it to work. Uh, things like protection of migrants. Because migrants are moving across borders, you need to have multiple jurisdictions uh, uh, coordinating policies in transnational advocacy networks often advocate in that respect. Uh, arms control, similarly. It takes two to tango, and so, or, or sometimes many more than two, and, and so it's an issue that itself, um, if you want to really deal with it, it helps to work across countries. Um, but in many cases, it's, it's just that they're hoping to adopt some policy or norm or standard that they believe is universally important. Right? And many transnational advocacy networks are motivated by these universal claims of good things that they're trying to promote everywhere. Human rights standards, the protection of journalists, um, stricter or more relaxed limits on abortion, those are just a few of the hundreds or thousands of, of possible examples um, that tan, uh, tans, uh, transnational advocacy networks can be lobbying about. So then what do international NGOs do? And as I've said, they do many of the same things as transnational advocacy networks. Um, but they also do things like conc providing concrete services, right? They provide health care if they're uh, of that sort of uh, NGO, like Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders. They provide de uh, development aid, uh, certain kinds of charities like um, Oxfam or uh, Catholic Relief Services or something like that. Um, they also gather and disseminate uh, information and... and, and on a, on a whole range of issues. And so um, sometimes that can be linked to advocacy, but not necessarily. Sometimes non-governmental organizations can do things that governments can't, right? So um, providing health in disputed territories. Uh, if the, even if the United States government wants to help out in Sudan or Syria, um, American uh, healthcare workers are not going to be allowed into those places because because those jurisdictions don't want Americans there and probably don't trust them. Um, in many of those places, Médecins Sans Frontières can work there. 
And so actually what's interesting is in many, in some cases, uh, Western governments or governments in various places will fund these international organizations and fund their work in places that those governments are interested in, recognizing that those organizations may be able to work there while the states uh, who are funding them cannot. Um, international um, or non-governmental organizations can also gather information about governments in closed societies. So Human Rights Watch is a great example of this. It's got a network of reporters around the world in places where Western journalists might struggle to go and in, in where the Western governments may not have much of a, a foot on the ground. And so, for example, if you read a State Department, U.S. State Department, report on human rights in country X or country Y, you may find that they're actually pulling a lot of their information from Human Rights Watch. And so it's another way in which governments actually rely on uh, NGOs to do things that they can't. Um, and of course, they provide immense amounts of aid to people neglected by their own governments in various ways. We think about people who are poor, people who are sick, um, especially refugees, right? Uh, there are a lot of governments who don't want to deal with refugees uh, for one reason or another, and non-governmental organizations um, can, can do a lot of that. So um, one key distinction that I want to make is NGOs as complements to government versus NGOs as opponents of government. So in some cases, uh, NGOs are doing things that governments approve of but struggle to do themselves. And so they actually complement government. In other cases, NGOs might be doing things very directly uh, intended to challenge governments. Sometimes they're doing a bit of both. Uh, but an interesting question to think about is when do governments welcome the work of these organizations um, and, and when don't they? So think again about something like CARE, which is a um, sort of a, a poverty relief charity organization uh, versus Human Rights Watch. A lot of countries are happy to have CARE involved because they're helping alleviate poverty, and a lot of countries uh, welcome the help with that. Some countries aren't so keen to have Human Rights Watch running around documenting uh, various kinds of government uh, abuses, and so Human Rights Watch sometimes gets some pushback. Um, and some countries um, have really, of course, cracked down on uh, NGOs and on transnational advocacy networks, especially the ones that are seen as being funded by the West and therefore are seen as being agents of the West and are doing things like promoting democracy and human rights in ways that certain governments see as uh, uh, undermining their, their position. Um, so again, to get to this question of how important are they, this depends very much on the issue under c consideration. So just to take an example from the Syrian civil war. If you're really into figuring out all these different factions fighting back and forth in the civil war, uh, the ones who are actually doing the shooting, you don't necessarily have to have um, a huge understanding of the, uh, the NGOs and the transnational advocacy networks. But if you want to understand um, how refugees are being dealt with um, when they cross the border, but also uh, still when they're still within Syria, um, this sort of thing, or, or, or how countries around the world are documenting the things that the Syrian government is doing to its people, um, non-government, uh, I'm sorry, NGOs and uh, transnational advocacy networks are incredibly important. 